everyone, Portland Tester Scale Modeler, welcome to another kit review. Um, today I've got a couple of kits that I've been waiting for for quite some time. Uh, since I saw them last year I knew I'd be buying, well originally there was only one and then the other one appeared as well. So, highly anticipated kit from me, supposed to come out in November, didn't, it's actually only just come out this week. So, it's the Bell Kits, Ford Escort RS 1600 Mark 1. Uh, one is a Timo Mackinnon and the other is the Roger Clark. Um, as far as I'm aware, both kits are identical uh, apart from the decal schemes and paintwork. So we'll pick one, we'll review one, um, and we'll see what the kit looks like. So the one I'm going to do is this one, and the reason I'm going to do number 7, this is 006, um, that one's 007. What we'll do, we'll have a quick look at this one. So this is Timo Mackinnon's car, 1973. Uh, the other one is Roger Clark's, that's a 72. So, there's the box, not much else on it, just another picture on the side, and that's it really. So, no other information there, so that's that one. The one we're going to review is this one. And the reason we're going to do this one is this was sent to me as a gift uh, from a friend of mine, Sam. Uh, very, very generous, didn't have to do that at all, mate, you're crazy, you really are. Um, but thank you anyway, he knows I love the old Fords, and uh, surprised me by sending me one of these, and... If I can find them, but we'll wreck in the joints. The appropriate paints too, if I give these a shake up. So we've got the Ford Olympic Blue and the Ford Diamond White for both of them. So absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much Sam, you're an absolute star. So I'm going to review this today. Um, got a few more things I want to get out of the way. I want to get the Torino out of the way. Um, and hopefully my MIG for the Russia build and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to build uh, probably this one uh, and we'll do after bench updates etc etc so this is the review for that but it might be quite some a few weeks before you see this thing actually started so like I said this is the 72 version we've wiped it out let's get it back this is the 72 version uh, Roger Clark's Daily Mirror RAC rally winner exactly the same kind of box same info on the side absolutely fantastic picture and that's that. So, good sturdy box, which is always good, fantastic box art, that will be being framed and put on my ceiling. We have a shadow of a doubt, we'll pop that there. Now, inside, I've had a quick look, but not a real good look around, so I'm trying to get this camera to unwhite out. So what we'll do is we'll go through the sprues, so we've got one clear sprue, we have one chrome sprue, we have chassis, floor pan, seats. We have wheels, those wonderful mini lights which look absolutely amazing. Exhaust, uh, brake discs, god they're tiny, etc. on that one. Door cards, dashboard, roll cage, steering wheel, gear shifter, some tools, that's nice. We've got tyres, we've got two sets of tyres, I assume we've got uh, normal and snow. So that's a nice touch as well. We have two sets of different belts for the seat belts. We have PE for the brakes and the seat belts. We have the decal sheet, Cartograph decals, the first bell kits to have these, so that's an absolutely excellent addition. Four decals, instruction book. And last but not least, the actual car body itself which is in there so absolutely fantastic uh, addition we'll start with this so really really nice there's nothing else in there but a nice sturdy box the body is absolutely well protected in there no problem at all so that is a very nice touch always a nightmare to have a real nice piece of plastic ruined by improperly being improperly packed So there we go, this iconic Mark 1 Escort shape. Uh, we've been crying out for this kit for fans for years. The only other kit was the terrible Airfix kit. So this is absolutely fantastic. I really do bell, hope Bell Kits, uh, any of you watching, carry on with the Escorts, the iconic cars. Uh, go through the Mark 1, uh, uh, Mark 2, uh, you've got the 600 in that, the Mexicos, the 
RS2000s, and you can carry on through the Mark 3s, XR, well not XR3Is maybe, but uh, the RS1600i, um, through up uh, Esco Cosworths, etc. Please do them, because they have a huge following, and uh, you will sell a lot. But anyway, the bodywork is absolutely fantastic. No real seams to have to sort out on it. Yeah, just very light marring on the surface, but you'll take some wet and dry to this to key it before uh, priming. So that's absolutely great. You can see it on the close up camera. Hopefully, when the light catches it, it's not perfectly smooth, but like I say, no problem at all. So that is great. So I'm going to grab the bag for that, pop it back in because it's a very very important part pop it back in its box and put it safely to one side so there's that, we'll pick the floor pan check here so off to a good start already so we've got the floor pan and the interior there so the floor pan's got a bit of detail underneath not a huge amount, this white plastic is whiting out the camera. Uh, not a huge amount under there, but they're still there. If you go to the close up cam, you can see the detail is there. Uh, the interior, again, be quite sparse on a rally car, so not a lot in there. The seats, co pilots, and the drivers. Again, very, very basic seats back then. None of the Recaro racing seats we've got. The molding is. Absolutely, yeah, faultless. Um, I can't see any problem anywhere there. There's no flash. Ejector pins are all hidden away nicely. So very well thought out sprue, very well thought out kit by the look of it. Clearly marked. Yeah, no problems there at all. Great. White plastic, not a fan of white plastic, but... Uh, not a problem at all. That's great. So yeah, perfect screw there. Uh, we'll go to this one next. Oh, we'll go. Carry on the theme of the interior. So this is roll cage. As we can see, we've got the dashboard. We'll turn it around. Put that part back there. So yeah, we've got the door cards there. We'll go through the closer cam door cards. Roll cage, there and there, so they're nicely done. More parts of the roll cage, centre console, the dash, dashboard itself. You want a bit quicker there then. Yeah, the dashboard itself. Foot pedals. They are very nice. Yeah, really good. Then we've got the steering wheel, three spoke, gear sh shifter, handbrake, a few other parts. We've got a wheel brace, you can see, fire extinguisher, steering stalks. Now, what you've got here, and you can see it there, you've got the parts to make it left or right hand drive, which is again a very, very nice choice to do. This one will be right hand drive, the other one probably left. So I'll have one of each, but again, you can see there the detail on those parts is very good. Got a bit of flash here on the actual uh, sprue itself, but there's nothing I can see. It's going to cause any problems. Again, beautifully made, absolutely stunning. So that's a, another great sprue. Right, so what have we got here? We've got transmission. Get it in there. Transmission, suspension, window wipers, exhaust, as you can see there, prop shaft. Do we depict the leaf sprung suspension? Does it depict it? Yes, it does. There we go. There we go. There's the leaf spring. Yep, yeah, so that's good. We've got the iconic, let's turn it that way, mini light wheels, which are very nicely done. 
Uh, like I say, window wipers. Fire extinguisher pull. Grills. Two sets of window wipers to the left and right hand drive. Suspension. Fancy roll bars. Transmission. And exhaust. And prop shaft. So again, absolutely fantastic. It's a shame there's no engine with it. Uh, but obviously there isn't a provision to open the bonnet. Uh, I'm sure if you were skilled enough you could open it and scratch build an engine. But to be honest, these are, I think these are better suited as curbside kits. Um, I'm just happy not to have the mark on Escort, not too fussy about it being having an engine to be honest. But yeah, great sprue, those wheels look stunning. Brake discs are there as well, sorry I missed those out. And manifold there as well. So yeah, when you look underneath you're going to have quite a bit of detail which is going to be nice. So that's going to cause any problem. And again, there's, there's not much you can say, the, the sprues, the moulding is absolutely top-notch. I mean, belt kits have probably got, well, half a dozen kits under the belt. Maybe seven or eight now. I bought the Polo the other day and that thing looked absolutely stunning. So again, well done belt kits. Great work. Um, we'll go with the chrome parts next. Now, a lot of these new companies now with chrome in the parts, they're not necessarily needing stripping. The likes of Tamiya, I think you can get away with. Um, it's just they can look at a scale. Now, what we'll do is, there's a bit of residue on that one. We'll just get it off of a, a cotton bud. There we go. So, if you look here, this is, that's a headlight, the headlights around. That doesn't look too bad to me at all. Whether it's out of scale, I don't know. But you've got the uh, spotlight covers as well. Push that back on. Hmm. I almost think you could get away with keeping those chrome like that. I think it would be a case of um, paint the car up, offer them up. You could probably put it on the bare sh uh, shell actually because you're painting it white and just see what they look like. But it's absolutely, I mean you can see me in there. It's top notch chrome, it really is good. Whether it's too shiny and a bit out of scale, I think it might be. But what I'll do with that is I'll offer that up to the bodywork when we start working on it and we'll have a little look and see but it's great, absolutely really is. Very very nice, again another top quality sprue. Well done bell kits. That's great, so yeah I think they're our scale, just a little bit, I think it's a little bit too shiny. You could probably dull it down with some dull coat um, to take some of that shine off but for me I think it would probably be easy to strip it with some bleach. Um, and we spray it using like alkali chrome or another chrome paint of your choice. Clear part, so we have the the full interior glass. Get it in shot for you, which is very nice. It's nice and clear. Not a lot of distortion in it. There's a couple of pit marks in the rear screen though. Is a bit of a shame. Maybe I could contact Bell Kits about that. Uh, we've got the headlights, spotlights, and again, all nicely done. If I get you in shot there, you can see them. So they're nicely done. Just look at that mark on the screen. Let me see if I can catch it. There it is. If you look at the light beam off my light, oh, where's it gone? There's a pit just above it. And there's a couple more at the top. So, are you going to see that in the built model? That one, the middle one, you probably would. I'll have to have a look. Uh, see the other kits the same as well. But it's not probably at the end of the day. It's only a little tiny pit mark. But I might contact grill kits about that and see if they can send out a new one. But again, great. Apart from those few little marks on the rear screen. The clear parts are very nice. Again, 
So, yeah, fantastic. Uh, next up, we'll have a look at the tyres. So, two sets of tyres, I'm assuming one is your normal mud off road, and the other is um, snow and ice. So, they're the different ones. Obviously, four each. So, if you have a look, there's two different tread patterns. So, this will be your normal off road tyre, this will be your snow. And ice be a lot harder compound, a lot deeper tread, and again, very nice. There's no no manufactured details on the tire at all, which is a bit of a shame. Obviously, you're getting into the realm of uh, licensing then, which is Ford license, but for the manufacturers of tires, should be able to get decals for those though. Should require them, and they are very nice. Uh, they're not going to need painting because. They're a very nice off black, dark grey matte colour. There's no seam on them either, so there's definitely no need to paint those up, so that's absolutely fantastic. Like I say, manufacturer's details, you'll be able to add. Uh, there's loads of decal schemes online to add the detail. Uh, now, we've got rubberized parts. We've got front and rear mud flaps. A couple of other parts, which I don't know what they are. That looks like uh, a boot tidy kind of thing for holding stuff. We'll have a look in the instructions and find out. I'm not sure what they are, but we'll certainly go through. It's very, very weird, rubberized, but again, top quality. A nice touch. They will need painting because they're not the greatest. There's a bit of marring on them. A few marks here and there, but yeah, get those painted up in a rubber black, and it'd be fine. So great, another nice touch. Pretty sure that's like a tidy for the boot to keep tools in and whatnot. We'll go for the instructions. Have a look in a second. Uh, we've got belts. So another nice addition, rather than having the decals, which that actually is as well. Uh, you get the real cloth belt. We've got what looks to be side window masks. So again, another nice little touch to the kit. There's no front one, unfortunately. I'm assuming there's a surround, is there? Hmm, don't know about that, we'll have to look through the instructions. So we've got blue and black cloth material. It's just not too bad. Whether I keep those or grade them to like a HGW set, I'm not sure. But these are very, very basic belts back then, I don't think be able to get anything like that but yeah they look fine to be honest I'd probably use them anyway so choice of blue or black I'll probably go with the blue so it's a bit more of a contrasting colour so that's nice and then to go with that we've got the photo etch which I'm not going to get out of its packet because it's not really worth it in there we have uh, front and rear brake discs slotted disc uh, groove disc on the front we've got grills Various little bits and bobs, and then the six uh, sorry, four point harness uh, latches and clips. So, again, very, very nice. It's gonna look great. So, that's that. So, there's the kick on through. We've got the decals next, which we will take out because the cartograph. So, it should be very, very, very nice. So yeah, printed by Cartograph. I think I saw the day on the Bell Kits website. It's the first kit to utilise Cartograph, and they are typical, fantastic Cartograph detail and quality. Can't see a fault on them whatsoever anywhere. So that's a very, very nice decal sheet. You've got UK number plates. The names, Ford logos, sponsors, the number number four. Like I say, there's the belts as well, decal, which they don't look too bad actually. So again, absolutely fantastic. And then the blue stripes down the side. Now, I would have quite liked to have painted these, but with that white pinstripe, uh, that would be a bit of a nightmare, so I probably would use the decals. The cartographs, so you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Very, very nice. That's a real nice decal skit sheet. So that's the main markings. Then we have the Ford. So you get 
front and rear Ford individual decals. These are metal decals, just like what I used on the Aventador. So again, it's a very nice touch. Rear view mirror and the Escort for the boot as well. So that's a very, very nice touch. They're going to be real fun to line up straight. That's going to be a bit of mask and tape as a level. And uh, take your time lining those up. That's a very, very nice touch as well. Like I say, the paints we've got, I've uh, got the Zero paint, Olympic blue, and the white. So it's the same colour on both cars, I believe. Uh, just basically, one's got a stripe and one's like half and half. So these will be great as well. I've used a lot of these lately, and they are very, very nice paints. So thanks again to Sam for sending me that, mate. You're mental, but uh, thank you. Like I say, we've still got the other kit as well, which I think we'll have a quick look through. Just very, very quick, and see if they are the same. Whilst we've got it all out together, it's not the longest review either. We'll have a look. So we've got the same clear parts. We've got the same pit in the back, so it's obviously a fault on the mould. Oh, we do have a broken part there. Now that's a shame. Yeah, I've got a broken rear bumper in the kit. So that has to be addressed. Got the same floor pan, same drivetrain components, the same interior components, same tyres. I'll go for the instruction sheet as well because I nearly forgot to do that. Uh, in there we've got the same metal decals but we have a metal rod. Not sure what that's for. Same photo etch, same belt, same mask, but obviously a bigger decal sheet than the other car. A lot more colourful, for sure. So it looks like maybe this one has the blue belts and the other one has the black, and I just include them for ease. But by the looks of it, other than the decal scheme and that metal bar, which I'm going to check in the other kit, the kit look absolutely identical. Bit of a shame about the broken part because this is a brand spanking new kit that arrived today. So, could be glue, but with being a chrome part, you'll see it. So, I will contact Bell Kits, well, where I bought it, and ask if there's any spares available. But yeah, like I say, other than those decals and that metal rod, just going to check in the instructions. They look to be identical kits, so it's literally on which one you prefer to build. Now the instructions, it's A4, well actually it's smaller than A4. Uh, quite basic instructions, I would have hoped for a bit more of a higher quality instruction book. But overall, it doesn't actually look too bad. So, on the front, picture the kit, we'll go to the close-up cam. Picture the kit, the box art, a few instructions, just basic stuff, you know, don't shove a toothbrush up your nose and yodel your Samity Sam or something mental like that. Then you got the colour call out, so it calls out for Tamiya, Revel, Humbrol and Mr. Hobbit Aquas. So you're basically you're fairly well covered there by most of the major ones, so that's great. We open it up, I've got to do the camera, you can see the exploded diagrams as such. It's almost like a CAD drawing, uh, well a CAD in itself, but without the actual pinpoint precision of it. Uh, assembly looks fairly simple, all the parts are fairly straightforward, the colour call outs are there, they're nice and clear, and the location of the part looks to be clear as well, so that's good. Uh, we'll look for a decal part and a photo etch part. So there we go. So where a photo etch part is called out, we have to close up. Uh, it's got a PE part where it goes and the colour should be painted. The tyres, so is it, is it giving us an option on the tyres? Is it down to you or is this car specific? I think it's up to you. Over here we get onto the left and right hand drive options. I'm going to zoom this camera out just a tad. There we go. So left hand and right hand drive options, so depending on which car you're depicting. So yeah, nice and clear, there's no glue needed, it tells you as well, which is great. Fantastic, there we go. There's that little holder, it's got the fire extinguisher in, 
the jack wheel brace that's on the the rear part of the car. God, I don't fancy all that stuff behind me if you crashed. Seat belts. So we got the. Let's see how it looks. I see. So there's a driver's seat, co-pilots passing through. P parts. They they look quite nice on those seats actually. Yeah, and it is the black one on this one, blue on the other. They've included both parts for ease. So they literally chuck them in to save having to specify for each particular kit. So you get a spare set of belts. Well, the belt material. Location of the seats, location of the harness. Then we have the um, dashboard itself. Again, left and right hand drive options. We show you there. So again, they're fine. Where a decal is called out, it's there as well. So all the instructions and the legends are fairly clear. Onto the uh, interior build-up. Roll cage, attaching that to the chassis itself. Drilling holes. For other versions. Okay. So what's going on there? We need to have a look for that metal rod as well and see where that goes. So, yeah, we're drilling the booth for something, I'm assuming. I don't actually know. <laughs> we'll have to have a look at that. Yeah, the side glass does have a black surround, so that's what the mask is for. As too does the front one, and there's no mask. Why not give you the front mask? That's just nuts. Anyway, uh, shouldn't be too bad to do. Chrome parts for the front. Headlights, etc. Spotlights, which are look great. Door handles, rear lights, mud flaps, and decal location. Again, not the best quality pictures. Um, could definitely do some high quality, higher quality instructions, but fantastic. It's a Mark One Rally Escort, <laughs> and that's it. A couple of pages on the back. So I didn't see that metal rod. I'm just gonna have a quick look through, make sure this kit isn't missing it. I would have assumed well no they are specific aren't they for each kit so that metal rod must be used for something else in that other kit. Uh, the price of the kit, the kit varies from between, I've seen it from 38 up to 45 depending where you get it from. So it's worth shopping around to find the best price. <coughs> I can't see that metal rod anywhere, so it must be specific on the Timo Mackinac one. But there we go. So probably the only disappointment in the kit is the instructions. They're a bit low quality, considering the money spent elsewhere. And they get the box, the actual mold, etc. The instructions are a little bit of a letdown. But like I say, it's a Mark One Escort, uh, one of the most iconic rally cars of all time. So what's not to like? So like I say, there's a review. I will probably start this in a few weeks. I must come back and start doing an at the bench update. And I cannot wait to start building it. I wish I could build it right now. But if I don't do this, there's a group build I'm not going to finish and another car build that I get put off, which I don't really want to do. But we will get to them and get going. So there we go. Bell kits, Ford Escort R600 Mark 1. Brand new kit. Looks absolutely superb. Um, top quality kit. I really hope Bell Kits please keep going with either just the old rally cars or just go through the Fords. Go right through those Ford rally cars all the way up to the Escort Cosworth. Uh, and, uh, did they do a focus? I think they do a focus or not? I'll have to have a look. Uh, but please keep going. Have a look through and bring out the rest of them for us. Um, so there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. Sorry if I've waffled on a little bit. <laughs> um, I'll catch you around and I'll see you soon.